Um, obviously, Omar had a big game. <clears throat> excuse me, had a big game on Saturday. Redshirted last year. Just, I guess, kind of talk about his development. What have you seen from him? And, and you know, wh where has he gotten better and where you guys feel comfortable putting him out there and, and obviously feeding him the ball as much as you can? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is just, number one, the growth that you're going to make, you know, from a freshman year to, you know, even though he still is a redshirt freshman, but from freshman year to a sophomore year, he's made an unbelievable amount of growth, you know, and then he just did a great job capitalizing when his number was called. You know, he had some depth issues. He had to play a lot more um, and made plays. You know, and that's what you got to do. You know, everybody's going to get an opportunity at some point, or you prepare when it happens, and he definitely was. Tom obviously talked a lot about, you know, the quarterback decision and how you guys came to it, but just from your perspective, what, was there anything you saw on film specifically from Taven that, uh, from this week that kind of set him apart? How did you kind of come to this decision? Uh, I mean, you know, at, at the end of the day, you got two really good football players, you know, and you got to get in a room and you got to figure out who the guy is that you're going to give the chance to. They're both really talented. Um, it would not surprise me if both of them don't have a career after college at some point, and however that happens, whether it be draftable or free agent. I mean, they're, they're both really talented young players. And, uh, yeah, it was a decision that we came to. And, uh, you know, we're excited to move forward. Talked a lot uh, Friday night with Alan about kind of the comfort and the, and the rhythm that he saw the offense get into looking back on film, evaluating it now, how do you feel that the offense was in that regard to kind of just establishing a flow and then staying in that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we played better. There's still plenty to clean up. You know, we were nowhere near close to perfect. You know, we still left a lot of, you know, at the end of the day, we left a lot of routine plays on the field. You know, and that's the hard part. When I say routine plays, when I say I mean throws and catches, you know, I just mean routine blocks, routine runs. You know, we still weren't at our best. Um, and so, again, it's another great challenge for us this week moving forward, you know, to go be the best version of ourselves. Um, you know, I think in terms of an offensive rhythm, I think uh, from week one to week two, I think Ohio State probably would have had something to do with that. Um, you know, the one thing I will say about Indiana State going back to last week is just how hard they played how well prepared they were. They had a great plan. Um, you know, Coach Mallory, I've got an unbelievable amount of respect for him and their program. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, from week one to week two, you know, Ohio State had a lot to do with us not looking in rhythm in game one. So, um, but no, both those kids did a good job, you know, and let's go get the next one. Yeah, with, with Taven, I guess, what's, what's the biggest area of growth you've seen with him since he joined the program, you know, back in the winter, and where do you want to see him uh, keep improving? I think, number one, system knowledge. You know, just, uh, you know, a great example would be, you know, you call something, he's at a point now where he can start to see it in his brain, you know, and I think just that, that for a young quarterback, that's the biggest thing is just the comfort and the growth that you have within the system. So just overall system knowledge, I would say, is probably where he's improved the most, um, which you expect a young or a new player, you know, to do. Uh, moving forward, I think it's just going to be, you know, commanding the offense, taking care of the football, you know, doing his job at a high level as opposed to having to make every play, you know, and, and you know, ball security, you know, all, all the same boring fundamental things that you guys get tired of us saying that's – that's what it's going to take for him to, you know, keep playing good football. Well, when it comes to the running backs, you've had two games that have been called two very different ways because of opponent and because of game situation. And yet you look at the carries and the receptions out of the backs, you could expect to, to catch passes and it's relatively balanced. Do you feel like you're, these two games have demonstrated the sweet spot that you want to get to and how you use the three main guys? Uh, I mean, we, we, we've got to be able to do whatever we have to do to win a football game. You know, I mean, whether it be the NFL and college, you know, you got to find out where you can win, what your matchups are, um, who can block who, who can't block who, who can win versus who, who can't win versus who. And so, um, you know, last week was a really good plan for them. You know, and then moving forward, whatever it takes for us to have a chance to win the football game, whether it's play fast, whether it's play slow, whether it's throw it, whether it's run it, whether there's an option element to it, no option, like whatever we have to do to win a football game. And so that's what we're doing right now, getting ready to go win the next one. Yeah, Coach said um, that, you know, you guys brought both of them in to tell them, you know, Brandon and Taven at the same time kind of wanted the message crystal clear. Were you part of that kind of process, kind of how that, that unfolded? I was in the room in that meeting, but, you know, that's Coach Allen's time. You and know, did I you understand the chain of command. 
<laughs> did you come, uh, when you walked off the field Saturday, did you feel like you were leaning in one direction or did you really have to sit down and kind of review the film as well? No, I mean, the, the, the film was a huge part of it. It always is, you know, nothing, you know, anytime you come off the football field, whether it's practice or a game, it's never as good as you think it is. It's never as bad as you think it is. Um, you know, because I think there was a point in the game where one of them was like 10 of 11 and the other one was eight of nine, you know, Brennan had a great two minute drive. You know, we had a good start. Um, part of that good start, Brennan had to come off the bench, you know, ripped an unbelievable ball on a second long. And so the film was definitely much more of a part of it than a gut feeling, but, um, you know, got together and made a choice. Time to move forward. Ask Coach Allen something similar, but <clears throat> with Taven specifically, have you seen anything different from him when he's gotten into game action? Uh, quarterbacks can be limited in certain ways in terms of contact and just how fast the game can move for them in practice. Have you seen things change in him as a quarterback since you've been able to get him into game situations last um, time? No, I mean, I think the, big, the biggest positive you draw from it is for a taller – basketballish build, you know, for a lankier build, he, he is a good runner, you know, and he's a physical runner. I think, you know, that to go along with his other skills, you know, I think that's the biggest thing because you never know. You know, you see people's feet get on fire. You see people all of a sudden make poor pocket management decisions when there's live bullets, and we haven't seen much of that. So um, just proud of him and ready to get going. Well, uh, over here, the uh, – uh, the the physicality that Josh Henderson ran with, the um, as hard as he runs, what, what's your thoughts on him and, and the way he ran and what's his uh, potential the rest of this year? Yeah, I think specifically to Josh, you know, and again, Josh will come up here and he'll tell you the same thing. He, you know, there's a couple things that, you know, he didn't do great, you know, in terms of some patience in a run game. and um, But unbelievable kid, you know, I mean, unbelievable worker, smart you know, you're going to get his best every single day, every single practice, every single meeting. And so to see a guy that does everything just right, have great success, like that's what football's about. Um, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that he does bring us is he can level off runs and finish runs, you know, and run physical. Um, the other thing is he, he can catch the ball well in the backfield. You know, really soft hands, good pass protector, you know, and so he, he gives us a really steady hand. But we've got a good room of backs. You know, Christian Turner's a really good player. You know, he was a little limited last week in terms of pitch count, um, but he's a really good player. Between J. Lou and Christian and Josh and Trent Howland, like, we, we feel pretty good about that position. Well, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about what you see in Louisville's defense and, and what do you expect uh, or what – what kind of a defense are they, number one? And number two, what concerns you most about them? All right. Uh, you know, from a schematic standpoint, you know, it is, you know, Purdue's defensive staff from a year ago, so we're pretty familiar with them. Um, you know, they, they will present multiple fronts. There'll be some four down. Um, there'll be some, you know, odd spacing or some zero nose. Uh, in the back end of the defense, you know, there's some quarters presentations, some man presentations, some rotational thirds, you know, so they're, they're, you know, it's not a ton, but it's enough to make you work and prepare. You know, I think they run around really well. You know, now we're kind of past the X and O's. I think they run around really well. I think their field defensive end is a really good player. Um, backers are runner hitters, um, both safeties, rangy, physical. And I think both corners are good players as well, so it'll be a great challenge for us, you know. And um, I've got great respect for those guys. You know, they'll be prepared, they'll play hard, you know, they'll play the game the right way. So it'll be a great matchup. Now that you have a starting quarterback named, how are you going to change maybe creating the game plan this week? Now that you know there's a bona fide guy that you can lean on to his strengths. Yeah. Well, there's two parts to that. Number one, in the first two. They're so similar from a skill set standpoint that that was the luxury that we had was you really didn't have to build two specific game plans, um, you know, but moving forward at the same time, you do want to play to those guys strengths and what, you know, what they have confidence in, what they feel like they do well. Um, you know, that's always going to kind of go to the forefront when you're having to make the difficult decisions. Are we running four verticals or curl flat? Well, he likes this better. Well, then let's do that. Um, you know, because again, if the quarterback plays well, the offense typically has a chance to play well, you know, and so just making sure that we're keeping him in a position that he's comfortable, he's doing the things that he's good at, um, and we're not putting him in a position, you know, to fail.
you know, and that, that's our job as an offensive staff. All right, thank you guys.